Well, for our 2020 Emmy Contenders Showrunners panel today, we're now joined by Tanya Siracho, who has had Vida the last three seasons on Stars. But sadly, uh, Tanya, a couple of weeks ago, we saw the very last episode. What was your last day at work like? Well, my last, very last day at work was when we del when I delivered the mix. You know, we, the final mix was March 13th, I mean, 12th, and March 13th, I went in, you know, to the, you know, the lockdown. So it was like, we barely got it in, um, delivered it right before we all had to, you know, lock down. So it, uh, that's, that was my last day. Um, I usually bring tamales and champagne for, uh, and I did, but I was like, I'm not partaking. Nobody's hugging. And they, they, it was still like early days. Oh, cause I was wearing the whole thing. And they were like, you're being ridiculous. What, what? I'm like, no, I, I, I think this is going to be a big thing. And then in a week later, just a week later, we were all doing the same thing. But like, I remember not getting to physically thank everyone, you know? Yeah. Well, as bad as this time has been, how lucky are you that, I mean, what if everything had shut down, oh. say two weeks before you finished? You oh, wouldn't no. have had a real finale. I think about it all the time. I think about it all the time. That I was like, just under the, you know, just under the gun, yeah. What was your last day on set like and what was the last shot you ever filmed? Um, it wasn't uh, the last shot, you know, of the of the episode. It was um, it was something in the bar, and uh, I, uh, you know, we did become a family. And I know it sounds like oh, you know, but it was very like there's a lot of theater makers that were um, part of the cast uh, and the crew. So like we had that like ensemble vibe, you know, like that forms. And I couldn't even like give the, a speech. I, I let the, the the two sister actresses do it because I was wrecked. You know, like I, I've come to care. It's the way we make Vida is as important as the thing we're making, you know? So like it, all the people, all the queers, all the brown, you know, um, artists that, that were involved. I just, I, I was, I had already started missing them. So it was really lots of tears, um, lots of speeches from everyone except me. I was just like a mess. When you very first developed the show, we're thinking about it, putting ideas together uh, with you and the creative team. From that moment to the, what it turned out to be the finale, was the finale kind of the direction you thought it would be at the very beginning or did it change? Well, I had an image. I had an image of how, of the two sisters walking, like not, not towards the sunset, it, but towards their intersection and back into the bar. I always had that image. I just didn't know how I was going to earn it when they, you know, reduced me to from 10 to six episodes in the last um, season. And, and you had so much story owed. So I was, I, you know, so I, how am I going to get there? Um, but I think we did. And also I directed that episode and wrote it. So it was very, it was a very fulfilling experience during that last episode, you know, to be like the thing that you had imagined and then to, to get to shoot it. What is it like when you get to direct, uh, of course you choose when you direct, but when you're also directing in addition to producing and writing and so forth, how does that feel different on that week? It's, I mean, I'd done it in the theater, right? Written and directed um, plays, but I had never, I mean, till, till Vida uh, done it. And it just, I feel like it's, it's fully immersive and, and, um, and there's no middle woman too that you have to like an, a, a director that you have to sort of like translate, um, you know, what you want. And it just, it's full, it's faster. Um, and I, I, I'm like, the bug has bit me. I really, really like it. You know, it's like, cause you're in full control of the vision. Yeah. I really, I, I really love it. I, I got to direct this, um, queer Cianera episode where we had, uh, uh, this guy have a, uh, like this coming of age, um, ritual in our culture a quinceañera but we queered it out and he like decolonized his name and it was like this it was so gorgeous to shoot um so like so so fulfilling and then of course the ending you know also i got to direct drag kings which i've never seen brown drag kings on tv i've never seen them drag queens yes but like um and i worked with some theater makers to write the song that i had worked in the theater so it was just it was like um it was a good way to go when you first hired uh, Michelle and Melissa as your two leads on the show and everything about the show in terms of the public perception of it's going to ride on that decision, those two decisions, how, had, how did they develop and change from the first time you met them until the very end? You know, we were all beginners, right? I was a baby showrunner. I'd only been in this town for three years and then I got the show. Uh, and then Michelle had never been on 
Michelle, who plays Emma, had never been in anything but a web series, never in a TV episode or a film. So like, there's a lot of, we were all very green, you know? Um, M Meli had just been here two weeks from Mexico. We had to get her, you know, visa and she'd only done telenovela. So like, we all sort of grew together, um, not just as an ensemble, but like, I mean, look, look at them now. I feel, I, I'm so excited to see where they go after this. My writers too. Um, my cinematographer that, who had never, you know, a Latina, Afro-Latina, who had never had run a unit, now I can't get her. She's, too, she's like off and run. I love that. That Vida was like the start of so many of us, you know, our careers. And now in addition to your crew and your, your other people, you get to release these two actresses into the world and see, see what they can accomplish. Yeah, and Roberta Colindres too, who's, who plays Nico, who's like, oh, the best. And I used to, she used to be in my plays too. And that, I'm, I love that people are like really discovering her. And I just my, I'm in love with all of them. So I, yeah. Now your show's never been shy in any of the three seasons about attacking political issues, uh, all kinds of subject matter that maybe some other shows would not. Why was that important to you right from the very beginning? You know, I just, I wanted to uh, create something that was true to life. And when I was allowed to have an all Latinx writers room, there was, it was never going to be anything but this, you know, we were never going to be anything but authentic and truthful. And, you know, uh, we are capturing a, a moment in time in this neighborhood um, some of my writers were from this neighborhood. A lot of, you know, a, a lot of us have skin in the game and, and the stuff that we treat, you know, that we, um, the themes that we cover. So I feel like it was always going to be like that, both in the politics and um, the themes and the way we deal with, with sex in the show uh, in this realistic manner. Um, yeah, I feel like it was always going to be that way because we are handling the story, you know? Was there ever a, a subject matter or a particular scene that you really wanted to do and decided, no, that's, that's over the edge, or even just physically, you couldn't figure out how to shoot it properly? Uh, was there anything like that? No, but I always, um, I get squeamish about Trump because I'm not a citizen. So I'm like, oh, it was me. And then when I apply for my citizenship, what are they going to say? This woman put, you know, but then it, we work it out in the writer's room. They, they, give, they give me like valor and, and, you know, they let me be brave. But I, stuff like that, that I'm like always think, because I, you know, a lot of us have skin in the game when it comes to like immigration issues. All of a sudden we're living it. I'm, I'm not a citizen, you know? Um, so I, I did get squeamish, but we, we still, you know, we still got it, all that stuff in. Well, like you said, when you started, you were such a beginner to TV and to being a showrunner. What now that you've finished this project? What kind of um, are lots of opportunities? Lots of doors opening for you because of this? Right now, I'm like under a, a, a Rona veil that I don't see. I could be like, do I need to work for Starbucks? Like, what do I need to? I'm I am right now. I'm I can't see past um, past this moment, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean. I, I'm sketching out things, you know, like dreaming. But I, I this moment, this quarantine was really scary for the first two uh, months. I, I felt barren and blind, you know, I, and, and people were like, oh, you must be writing so much. And then you finished your show. And I wasn't, I was just like, like this. So um, nothing's come out of me yet, but it's the, yeah. It's, Decisions coming soon. Yeah, it's such a weird moment. Also, it's a weird moment to like measure yourself in this industry in relation to the actual big like social political moment that's happening you know and being a brown person you know um a person of color of, uh, in this industry like i i'm measuring a lot like my place in it for the people that did watch your show they'll be voting in november all kind of races not just presidential but state races county races city races what would you like them to be thinking about? So I'm very myopic, right? So I think about Latinx, but we're 20% of the population of this country and we are invisible, you know, like in so many ways, like we don't count, not just in this industry when you look at the numbers, but like to this country, even though we're, twi we're, we're the majority minority, you know, I hate my, the term minority, but, but so just think of us. I, it would be great if we are considered, you know, humanized. In, in, in all legislation and just in, in, in that political thought process.